Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Cooper from National Parks at Night. And last week, uh, most of our team spent above the Arctic Circle on a couple of different workshops that we were running. Uh, one was in Norway uh, on the Lofoten Islands, and the other was in Iceland. And the Aurora Borealis was magnificent. So our team thought, hey, why don't we uh, put together a video showing you all how you can uh, increase the impact of your already beautiful Northern Lights images. Um, so let's take a look at some techniques that we can use in Lightroom um, and let's jump right in. So when we first start or we first make a capture of the Northern Lights, we're, you very well may be blown away as I was here um, in Lofton shooting this image. Um, but with a little bit of tweaking in Lightroom and not a lot really at all, um, you can turn it into something like that. Uh, it's got even more power and more impact. Um, you can even bring out colors. Again, this is the straight capture inside of Lightroom, nothing done to it. Um, and just a, a few sliders and you're gonna come up with something like this. Or maybe you even just wanna brighten it up a little bit and add just a touch of contrast uh, to bring out the power of the lights. Um, you can do that too quite easily uh, just using Lightroom. So let's take a look at how we can do that, shall we? So I'm gonna go back to the grid module and I'm gonna jump onto this first image and tap D to get to our develop module. And here we are, this is the image straight out. Now, uh, straight out of the camera. So our technique here is not gonna be terribly different than that we use for processing the Milky Way. Um, we need to add some contrast and we need to add some brightness to the image to help separate the Northern Lights from the sky. Um, and perhaps even some whites. And these are all sliders that uh, we use uh, when we're working in Lightroom. Let's begin uh, just by working on the overall image and then I'll show you how I actually uh, go about doing this. But whenever you take dehaze and you move that slider up a little bit, you're gonna start to see an increase in contrast between the darker part of the sky and uh, the Aurora itself. Uh, you're gonna have the same effect on the Milky Way. Um, next, we could come in and add some whites. Now, the one thing that I don't like about this is we have now separated out uh, the Northern Lights from the sky, which is great, but notice how the dehaze actually darkens the sky down. So let me take off the dehaze and the whites and see where we were. So when we add in some dehaze, we get the good effect, but it's also darkening the sky a little bit. So that's when I may come in and add some shadows or perhaps even a little bit of exposure. Now the image is brighter, but we still have better separation from the dehaze. Um, we could also bring up the whites a little bit if we want to increase that a little bit more. Now you can just go crazy here and you know make these things super uh, over the top. So, you know, kid gloves on these techniques, folks, but, uh, uh, but they are very powerful. Now. That's really about it for increasing uh, the impact of the Northern Lights themselves. There's plenty of little uh, small things we can do to massage the image, but uh, let me go back and double click on Presence to reset that and double click on Tone to reset that and that gets us back to the beginning. Um, what I'm gonna do first though is because I wanna separate the sky from the foreground and work on them separately. I don't want all of my uh, adjustments to the sky to also apply to the foreground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and click on the mask icon. I'm gonna click on sky and Lightroom does a pretty good job most of the time. Not every time you can see there's some mask coming in on some of the mountains, but let's see that may not even have an effect. So all I did was press the mask button and then press mask sky and here it is. So now what I'm going to do is those same techniques. I'm going to go down to the dehaze button and I'm going to increase that a little bit and then maybe bring up my exposure a little bit. And I'll probably do this before my whites because I want to focus more on those shadows and then some shadow areas that's starting to help over here. Um, and then maybe come back and do some whites, but be careful because the whites may become problematic if I increase them too much down here, even though I'd like to see this brighter. So I'm gonna increase my highlights a little bit, or I'm sorry, not my highlights, rather, my whites. So we're gonna click on those whites and bring them up. Now I'm liking what's happening in here, but this is starting to maybe suffer just a touch. So let's bring those whites back down. Now, at this point, what I may do 
is simply make another mask and wipe out some of this stuff. So what I'll do is come up here to the mask, click on this and say uh, duplicate mask one. And of course it comes up as all the same settings as the other one. So we'll begin by resetting all of these, remembering double clicking on these words. Uh, oh, that's not actually working in this one inside the mask. So we're just gonna reset these by double clicking on the words here. And we're basically back to zero. Now I'm gonna adjust this just by looking at this area up in here. So I'm gonna take my whites and bring them up a little bit without any concern whatsoever what's happening down in here. Because then what I'll do is on this mask, I will subtract and I'll grab a brush and this will give me the subtract brush as you can see the minus in the overlay here. And I'm gonna set my flow to 100% and I'm gonna set my feather really high and then I'm gonna make my brush kind of big here. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking out that whites that I just added and you can see that it makes a pretty big difference. Although, by actually minusing this, it made it a little bit darker. So I'm gonna hit um, Command Z and do it again, subtract with a brush. And this time, maybe I'll just take it from this area rather than that other area as well. Okay, so I just went in there and notice that I was not using auto mask. In this case, I don't wanna do that. I just want to actually remove this area here from the scene and auto mask would be problematic there. So I turned uh, auto mask off and just painted that out. Now, in this case, the overlay is kind of confusing because it's green. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that color uh, square right there and choose red and maybe lower the opacity a little bit so I can see, all right. That's better. Now I can see where the mask is actually affecting. All right, so turn off the show overlay. We now have two masks on this image. And the first one up here is the second one I made. This one down here is the first. And you can take them both off if you want to see where we started. Now let's just start with the second one I made, which is just this area here. Notice how that significantly brightens that area up. And then the overall one is down here. And we've got an image that's got, to my opinion, a little bit more impact uh, than the one before. Now at this point, I could turn around and if I wanted to uh, brighten up the foreground, although I think it looks pretty good the way it is, what I could do is simply take this mask here, which is the overall sky, and then click on that and say, duplicate and invert mask. Okay, now you can see the white is at the bottom the red here is the mask showing that. And now what I can do is I could brighten up my exposure if I wanted to. Like I said, I don't feel like it needs to be brightened up too much, but I mean, you can go crazy, right? Um, but maybe just somewhere, eh, maybe a little bit of brightness does help. I just put it up to 0.5. Um, so as you can see, using the masks together with a few basic techniques can really impact your photo. Let's do one more. Let's go to this one. And this particular image um, was powerful, lots of colors. I've never seen so many colors in the Northern Lights before. So once again, our very simple technique is to come in and add a little bit of dehaze that darkens our sky. So we then add a little bit of exposure and maybe even some shadows. And what I'm shooting here for is brightening up this sky so it's not completely black. And that seems to serve pretty well for this image. It doesn't even need um, different masks because my dehaze and shadows and exposure that I did over here doesn't seem to be adversely affecting my foreground. So in that case, I could just leave it as a global uh, uh, adjustment rather than having to do a uh, local adjustment through masks. So that gives us time for one more. Okay, cool. So check this out. In this image, all I wanna do really is again the same techniques, but this, the reflection is kind of getting lost here. So we'll do one mask for the sky. We click on sky here. The AI figures out where the sky is. And then we come down here and we're gonna go to, once again, a little bit of dehaze to help separate the northern lights. And 
then some exposure to brighten up that sky a little bit because it's gotten darkened down. Get up there. All right, that's looking pretty good to me. Maybe even some shadows. Again, we're basically just controlling the darker parts of the image. And by the way, if you're getting vignetting, it's a really good time to go down and uh, uh, check out your uh, lens corrections and remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections to uh, get rid of that distortion, or rather the vignetting. And if that's not enough, which I've seen, you can then increase the vignetting even more. And you can see how I'm lightening up those corners when I do that. Okay. So uh, straight away, what we did was uh, our common technique now is a little bit of dehaze, some exposure, some shadows, and if you wanted, you could even go in and add some whites. I don't feel that this image needs that, but you can see how it's just affecting more of the brighter areas. I think I prefer it with a little bit less whites or none at all. Um, but now I want to do, I want to brighten up the foreground too. So once again, uh, I could invert this mask, but maybe I want to leave my mountains the way they are. So what I'll now do is just go to the mask icon once again click create new mask and this time I'll do say a linear gradient and I want to affect this area down here the most so I'm going to click here and just drag up and I'm actually defining my gradient as I drag up so this becomes the actual gradient in here and then everything below that line is 100% affected by whatever I do next over here so let's just go ahead and add a little bit of exposure to that and maybe some whites. I'm going to stay away from dehaze because this is already dark in the shadows here. I don't want that to get any darker. Um, so maybe some whites. And there you have it. Now the thing that you don't want to do is make the foreground brighter than the sky or even the same brightness because sometimes that can look pretty fake. So let me just show you here real quick. I take that up and it becomes brighter than the sky itself. That's always an indication that it's a little bit fake. So Kid gloves, again, on the brightness. Don't be afraid to pull it up, but make sure it's just a hair darker than the top. It'll give you a little bit more realistic look. So folks, thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I hope you caught some Northern Lights over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's one for the record books. It was a pretty stellar, uh, pretty stellar time. So thanks again for joining us. Um, and don't forget, uh, if you like this video, you can uh, click the like and uh, don't forget to uh, check out our website, nationalparksatnight.com for all kinds of free blogs, um, uh, information, um, and of course, our workshop and event schedule. Until next time, we'll see you.